Hey guys, it's time for that question. Have you ever thought of starting your own podcast? Uh, do you wonder why people actually start podcasts and what benefit they could really do? You know, are they, are they such a hard time to set up and the time commitment, are they really worth it? Well, today I'm going to talk all about the three reasons why I think creating a podcast is a fantastic idea. So stick with me. Hey guys, it's interior designer Adam Skoogle and welcome to episode 22 of the So You Want to Be an Interior Designer podcast. I'm really pleased to, to have you here with me today uh, and I really want to tell you who this program was designed for. So this show is really for you mid-career aspiring interior design or decorating solopreneurs that need support in building your business even while you're still working nine to five. My aim is to help you balance your time, make more money and be able to choose the projects that you want to work on rather than the ones that you have to take on or feel you have to take on to pay those bills. So um, thank you again. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Leave me a comment below about what you think about the topic today and the podcast, the show. Uh, if you're on Apple, if you're listening uh, somewhere, you could be in the car, you could be going for a walk. Uh, leave a review, please, if you wouldn't mind. Tell me what you really think of the show over on Apple Podcasts. You can leave, leave a review there. I would love to know your feedback. Before we kick off, into the whole world of podcasting and my thoughts on why I think it's probably a really good idea to consider this. Uh, I just want to check in with you. Is your business at the moment having some struggles? Are you strong in some areas, but not so strong in others? That could be marketing, confidence or whatever. If you would like a report uh, showing what you can do with those strengths and opportunities, then take my quiz. It's over at adamsgoogle.com forward slash quiz. It takes about two minutes to do, two to three minutes max. It's 15 questions, so hang in there, finish it all off, and uh, you'll get your results personally uh, addressed to you, and you will have some action items on there that I've personally curated for the areas there that uh, you know you, you, you need some support in, uh, and also what to continue doing if, you, if, if you're actually succeeding in some of those competencies on there. Anyway, let's get into the world of podcasting. So really interesting one, this one. And um, what I want to do is really start off by saying, you know, with a podcast, um, what are some of the reasons that you would actually consider doing a podcast? I mean, a podcast requires regular content. It really should be, you know, uh, really should be sort of caught up every two weeks or weekly to maintain or develop a kind of consistency there. So my podcast is weekly. Um, but it does take effort. It requires a little bit of skill to get it up off the ground and going. I don't think it requires a great deal of skill. It can certainly be taught. But once you've started and done it, uh, there are some real uh, reasons to continue doing that. So number one is it builds credibility. I mean, what do you think of podcasters? What do you think of me perhaps by if you're listening to this podcast or you have been for a while? Uh, it builds some credibility. Hopefully, uh, you're listening to the show and, and over time, you're getting information based on my experience that you find helpful. If you continue to tune in, you probably do find that there's there's topics and, and perhaps uh, ways that I view specific areas in our design biz that um, you know, you're able to uh, glean, could be my opinion, my experience, and then hopefully get some benefit from. But if you're a podcaster, it shows that you're making an effort into an investment of time that is not just kind of Instagram stories or little out and about stories that you might do on Instagram, which are kind of sort of maybe potentially a bit flippant because we know those stories only last 24 hours or whatever. So um, when you see someone on a podcast list, you know, if you look up interior design, my podcast is going to pop up there hopefully. In the first, uh, a few people have had a look and can see it, which is a good thing. But um, hopefully you'll be thinking, well, this person is taking the time to create a podcast. They're investing their time into something which is really, you know, it's not creating an instant revenue stream. You don't get, a stream. You don't get paid to do it. But I do find, and I am finding that it's really helped me build my credibility 
um, as a as a person who has insight on the design industry based on my experience, you know, uh, over the last fourteen years, creating a podcast and podcasting also creates a loyal audience. So, did you know that the sixteen million people that you're in the United States, uh, they did a, they did a survey uh, in a recent Nielsen study. Sixteen million people in the United States describe themselves as avid podcast fans. This is according to that study. So that's that's a lot of people. Um, loyalty too is a big one for those as we're talking about a loyal audience. It's a big thing. The loyalty of listeners can be seen in the actions that they take as well. Um, this is part of the same reporting. Some seventy-two percent of consumers who have listened to a podcast for four plus years have actually purchased something from a sponsored ad, which is interesting, isn't it? This, this also indicates how much trust listeners put into their favourite host recommendations. I mean, I don't have any ads, but I, I listen to podcasts and I definitely do. The people that I follow, if they're recommending something to me or they're advertising something and I th think that person has real integrity, um, then I, I will consider and I have purchased uh, products or or recommended, you know, could be books, audio books, online courses from people that I really know and trust. So, uh, and that can only come out of, you know, that that can only come out of a loyal audience. Number three is that this is evergreen content. So, this content at the moment, I'm talking to you. I'm on my podcast. I'm recording. This content is going to be evergreen. Now, evergreen means that it doesn't disappear. You know, you could probably find this episode in two to three years time unless I take it down or something's happened. Uh, it's broadcast to, to all the podcast networks. Um, unless I pull it, you know, you can find podcasts that are sitting there, episodes that are a few years old. The podcaster may have ceased production of the show. Uh, you know, only this morning I was looking at somebody's podcast to see what they're up to. Uh, that I that I knew of, and then they'd finish their show in 2022. But all those episodes are there. I can go in and listen to that content whenever I like. So this content is out there and it's evergreen, meaning it doesn't disappear. Now, have a look at Instagram stories, for example. As I said, a lot of that stuff that we're putting out there is just a flicker in the day or night, and people are having a quick looky-loo. Oh, look, look at that, and it's gone. So uh, podcasting is there to stay. The episodes... Are evergreen and they're not going to disappear unless you actually take them down. Now, reasons that you may consider starting a podcast as an interior designer or decorating professional. Number one, you can speak to your ideal client. And this is absolutely true. I mean, who is my ideal client at the moment? My ideal client is you, the listener. You're the person that's listening to me and hopefully gleaning something out of today's topic. You could be uh, listening to other episodes where I talk about contracts or difficult clients or how to deal with this or that, uh, and you're getting something out of it. So you are my ideal customer because I am doing this podcast so that you get information, you get support, and hopefully, uh, you know, you'll take my quiz at some stage or some other sort of free item that I might offer to you so that you can jump from here over to my email list where I can actually talk to you further uh, you know, offer you other insights. Uh, I have a summit coming up um, on how to get design clients. So if you're on that list, I'll be telling you when that is. Uh, that's going to happen in, in a couple of months' time. So that is my whole purpose of starting up this podcast. So my ideal customer is you. Now, your ideal customer might be uh, your client uh, who you've, you, if you're a kitchen designer, you might have had a free opt-in. I've been talking about that a lot lately if you've been listening to the podcast, but you might have given a free opt-in that talks all about kitchens and the five best uh, or essential kitchen uh, updates for, for whatever the year is. So your customer, they may have downloaded this from, they may have found you on YouTube and you can offer this lead magnet, I call it there, that free download about kitchens. They may have found you there, then they get on your email list. The podcast is the same thing. So if you're talking about kitchens, if you're a kitchen designer and you've niched into kitchens, then you might be talking to consumer clients, which is really just every day, um, Jan and Michael, Tom, Dick and Harry. You might be just talking to them about all of the different innovations in kitchens um, as you go through your podcast. And uh, I was only today in, in, in looking at videos on YouTube 
from this this quite wonderful kitchen designer and and I thought there were so many things that she could be talking about and the list goes on that I could almost think of uh, you know so many topics off the fly for her if she was say running a podcast and talking about those important decisions you need to make when building a family kitchen for example so you can get talking to your ideal customer number two is you can interview people that you want to get to know further this is an, another good one and what I'm talking about there is people that are associated with your ideal customer. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extend on this one quite a bit. And uh, I want to reference this uh, whole second point to a, a situation that Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, you may have heard of him. He's an American businessman. He's an author, a speaker. He's, he's, a, he's a champion for entrepreneurs. And... Um, in his book, Crushing It, which I, I got an audio book, book of a few years ago, um, How Great Entrepreneurs Build Their Business and Influence and How You Can Too, he talks about the benefit of podcasting. And he just referred to this woman called Sally, who was a 42-year-old divorced woman entering the world of real estate. So we're designers, but what he's saying is, what if you are this Sally and you're entering real estate. There's a change, sea change there, and you're entering perhaps into a new profession, which is saturated. You know, there's a lot of interior designers, there's a lot of real estate agents, but how do you stand out in the crowd? And what he referred to was a situation where Sally could start a podcast. Now, this is the suggestion or the angle that he gave Sally uh, in terms of why this would be a benefit to her. So he suggested that she start a weekly podcast and she would position herself as an almost digital mayor of the community that she wished to service in real estate to, to buyers and, and sellers. So what, what's a digital mayor mayor anyway? Well, a mayor in the real world, world is you know a political figure who provides local leadership in resolving various administrative, legal and civic projects. You know, that's that's pretty serious stuff. But mayors should also know a lot about their communities. From investing in the success of local businesses to knowing where to unwind, mayors should fully understand the life of their communities. So do you get where this is going? Sally can kind of turn herself into this digital mayor. So she, digital meaning online, everything online, podcasting is broadcast online at a podcast network platform. YouTube, where I broadcast this as well as all of the podcast network networks, is a digital platform. So she can become a digital mayor. So what does that look like for real estate agents uh, rather than just that blurb about mayors that I just rattled off? So for Sally, uh, she is going to step into that role in the following way. On her podcast every week, she should talk about community issues, the best schools and interviews that she can conduct with people in the community to support their business. So she could interview, say, the school principal and highlight the school's awards. She could have people, they could have people in that school that have been tenured, have been uh, teachers at school for 40 years and they're coming up to a big anniversary and there's an award for that. It could be their commitment to, um, you know, learning and development, whatever that is. She can really highlight the people in that community that are kind of the, the backbone of, you know, the people living there and their children. Children have to go to school and they want to know where reputable educational, um, you know, educa institutions are, i.e. the local schools. Um, so she can do that. She can find the stories tucked away around the neighbourhood and all of the iconic things that make that area what it is. Uh, and she can create content that tells the story of the area that she's servicing talk about the community issues. She can also talk about stores and restaurants. She can talk about Joe, the independent supermarket who's at risk of closing down due to a large supermarket opening up around the corner. Uh, she's inspiring her listeners, listeners to shop local and support local uh, retailers. She romances the area, speaking with passion about all the benefits of what's in the area. As I said, restaurants, what about dog parks and other areas that make this area super unique and family friendly? So can you guess what the key here is and the major differentiation, say, between Sally, the real estate agent who just puts her sign up on a Saturday morning uh, and does a quick Facebook post um, showing, you know, what, what's being sold 
uh, there's a difference here. The key here is that over time, this is making Sally the go-to realtor in the area as she's really leading from her personal values, which are valuing community, championing the support of its infrastructure. So you can see where all this is going. Creating a podcast takes effort, but what is the difference between the profile of Sally, that person that cares about her community, she's interviewing people in the area, she potentially is also uh, running her, her audio podcasts as a video episode like me, and she's engaging people that will find out about this podcast. And there's many ways that she can promote the podcast. But what I'm saying in this episode is look at the difference between what Sally's going to do with her podcast and, you know, the regular Joe realtor down the road who is just doing the bare minimum because, you know, as per the promo uh, schedule for this week, he or she's got to show their, their listings on Saturday or Wednesday or whenever they are doing them. But uh, there's a great deal of difference in the effort, but what a potentially massive difference there could be between, say, Sally and her counterpart who isn't doing any of this or really showing that personal touch. So what I want to talk about now is you as an interior designer or decorator, how could you incorporate a podcast into your mix, have a think about it, and talk about your niche and incorporate that or build your podcast topic around your niche. And I do believe that having some form of niche is an important thing and to to sort of go in, lean into your niche as opposed to not having any kind of niche at all and kind of being master of, of, of uh, no particular style, just servicing anybody and everybody and being a commodity. But um, I want to quickly refer to a discovery call. I had a call uh, a little while ago from somebody uh, who, uh, you know, I, I was just talking about the, the state of their business, how they were going. I constantly ask people if they would jump on a Zoom call with me. If you're on my email list, if you get my emails, I'm asking that every week because I want to know what you guys are thinking about, what you need in terms of how do I fix this issue on my business or how do I do this or how do I handle that? So I had a discovery call and I want to talk about my recommendations uh, to this person uh, called, I'm going to call her Nancy, just just uh, in you know maintaining her sense of privacy. But um, this discovery call was all about Nancy, who really I love her niche. Uh, she was niching in vintage and antique finds uh, for her affluent client, and uh, you know, like like all of us at some point, you know, Nancy was struggling to keep the pipeline full or really to kind of find that uh, elusive ideal client. So who is her ideal client? To clarify that, her ideal client, and I asked her specifically, who is your ideal client and who are you you aiming for? Who is that one person in your mind that you could really think, this is really the perfect person. If they called me tomorrow, this would be the type of person that phoned through. Her ideal client, she said to me, was a mid-30s bachelor who had just bought a thoughtfully renovated uh, maybe historic home, maybe a brownstone in New York. And she wished to decorate a home like that that was ready to go. No kitchen or bathroom reno. She wasn't interested in kitchen or bath reno. It was pretty much, you know, it could have just been uh, renovated by an architectural firm. And it's kind of an empty sort of a series of spaces perhaps that she wants to come in and fill with really amazing antiques and repurposed furniture and she's going for this kind of probably, you know, could be a single guy, um, no kids at this point, bachelor, uh, who is purchasing this property. And she is going to come in or wants to come in and really furnish that and make it, you know, really rock and roll for this particular guy. So it got me thinking. And, you know, the last couple of days I thought about her and her situation. And I thought about, and I also asked her, what are some of the challenges for you? at the moment in aiming for that type of person or going out into the world and associating with people in the areas that potentially this ideal bachelor, mid thirties guy, you know, could be hanging out in. She said that she was a fair way away from the ideal areas that she wanted to work in. So she literally was, was half an hour away from the locations that were in Manhattan uh, that she would love to be working in. And hopefully that ideal client would be 
uh, purchasing, um, you know, a loft, apartment, whatever house uh, in that area. But uh, based on her, you know, proximity to where that was, uh, she wasn't able to duck out and go to events or organise events, and we spoke about that. But um, so that's a valid, you know, a valid concern is that she she didn't have that much time to go and do that, which is understandable. She's also a mum. She I, I can't remember whether it was two kids. But um, she had, I'm pretty sure she had a couple of small children, a husband. So she's got this whole personal life that she has to take care of. Young kids need support, as we know. And uh, she didn't have a lot of available time to be flitting out physically to go and, and start to network in areas where that potential ideal client might be. So I thought about podcasting for her as a suggestion. And I'm yet to send her a follow-up and, and let her know my thoughts. So... I'm doing it now and I, I will actually communicate this back to, to Nancy. So my suggestion to Nancy could be that she starts a podcast with a niche around buying, renovating and decorating historic homes in a sensitive manner. And there could be a whole lot of topics in there that are covered week by week. You know, anything from showcasing high ceilings and decorative mouldings Infusing elegance with choice hardware could be another topic. Honouring traditional architectural elements or colour schemes and textiles, bridging past and present, for example. Modernising while preserving historical integrity. These are just, you know, some ideas. I was doing a quick review online. But you can imagine that could be the basis of the podcast as a topic. And then guess what? She could interview the realtors that sell the type of homes in those areas uh, that will service her, her ideal client or that her ideal client may potentially purchase. So she could be talking to realtors, which is really a platform for them to be talking about their business and their expertise, which they love. Most people love to be invited on a podcast as a guest because it's an opportunity for that person to showcase whatever it is that they're actually selling and their expertise. The other thing she could do is, is interview shop owners of these wonderful vintage uh, stores, you know, uh, furniture stores that sell vintage product or antique products. She could have them on the show talking about, you know, the type of antiques, where they source from and uh, the value of purchasing antique and, and um, honouring our history and keeping all of that in the mix. So these are just ideas, but uh, you can see that there is a whole world out there uh, and a whole step up, say, for Nancy, if she chooses potentially to, to start a podcast, inviting people on that are actually going to attract the type of people that she actually, the end client that she wants to work with. And then it's also showing her as an expert, an industry expert. As soon as you see someone with that topic on a podcast, you can see that this person is really investing time and effort into talking about something that is probably a huge passion. I mean, none of us create podcasts because it's a flippant idea. Podcasts are designed to be really weekly. Uh, anything past that can be, you know, people can forget. So having a weekly podcast would be a great idea. And think of all of that uh, evergreen content that you'll create with that. So that would be my message to Nancy, for example, is to think about what you're doing on Instagram, for example, assess whether or not that's working, the time and effort that's been put into that, and then think about uh, whether a podcast might be a more sound option. And I can tell you that once you get going with a podcast, it doesn't actually take that long each week to record and edit if you have a system. But that's a whole other podcast in itself on, on creating a podcast. The last thing that I want to say, point three, is that your podcast will hold more credibility than anything that you'll do on Instagram. I know it's a big statement to say, but, you know, unlike... Um, blog posts, videos, stories on Instagram, where the audience can easily skim, skip the content. Podcasts do require active listening. So this means your audience is more likely to engage with your content and retain the information that you share. Additionally, podcasts, as we know, are incredibly versatile. You can be in the car, you can be cooking with headphones on, you can be traveling. It is so versatile. So there you go. There are some reasons why I think that podcasting is really an excellent way to show yourself as an expert, to get content out there and to really get you engaging with people that you want to network and collaborate with uh, in, in a way that showcases them first and foremost. 
So when we want to collaborate with anybody, the first thing we should think about is not the ask about what they can do for us, but what we can do for them. And having someone on or asking someone on to be a valued guest on your podcast is a great idea. Think of how many people would like to jump on to that if they know that they're going to be talking about their business and really their expertise in their chosen area. So action steps for you. Uh, tell me if you're watching on YouTube, what do you think about this episode? Would you consider a podcast? Let me know your comments on this one. I'm interested to find out. Uh, we're going to finish there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are flailing in your design career, that's okay. We've all been there and you would like some feedback, a report uh, on what to do with those uh, opportunities that you have and also how to continue to enhance those strengths. Go over to adamsgoogle.com forward slash quiz. It takes about two or three minutes, 15 questions. And of course, at any time I want to hear from you, I want to know what's going on with you. If you ever want to jump on a call with me and discuss that, I'm going to give you my advice as well. Do so over at Adam, email me, adam at adamsgoogle.com if you'd like to do that. So I want to finish as always to say, hey, I believe in you and uh, hold in there. There are plenty of ways that you can rejuvenate and reestablish your career if it is flailing at the moment. Uh, I know a lot of people are struggling. Um, for those of you that are having a great time at the moment in your business, lots of clients or fabulous clients, you don't need a lot of clients to be having a fabulous time. Even if it's just one fabulous client, good on you. You created that experience and uh, make the most out of it. But until next time, I just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, we are here every Tuesday. I'm here every Tuesday. I don't know who we is. Uh, and I'd love for you to join me each week. Please like and subscribe. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube uh, via the uh, the link below. If you haven't already, I would love to, to have you there. So until next time, until next, until next Tuesday, have a great rest of week and bye for now.